Okay, calculus. We're just going to focus on derivatives. And the other morning we started reviewing this, so let's just uh, let's just quickly review what we looked at the other morning, and then kind of jump right back in. Okay, if you remember, I said the most basic kind of structure of a function that we typically look at is f of x equals a x to the b. So typically we're going to look at functions that follow this structure. There's some parameter, some number, times x raised to some exponent. And then the basic formula for a derivative when you're dealing with a function like that is, so we say, the derivative of f with respect to x, that's the same thing as, we'll just say, f prime for notational convenience, e equals b times a, the x, b minus 1. All right, this is our, our basic formula. We're going to take this and we're just going to put it in a box over here and I'll leave it up there for reference the whole time we're talking about derivatives. Okay, so let's just, let's use this and let's just do some practice. Let's do a couple practices. Uh, let's say f of x equals 4x squared. What is the derivative? Following this formula. times 4 x. times x 2 minus 1 okay now can we simplify that 8 x of the x or a, or a times x perfect yeah right because 2 minus 1 is 1 mm -hmm. and x to the 1 is just x yeah perfect excellent okay let's do another one All right, let's do one third times x to the third. Walk me through it, Catherine. Let's leave them separate. What do you think? It's a little tricky. I'm throwing you a curveball here. Kenneth, what do you think? How would you make how do you make any sense of this? First of all, we do it term by term, right? We're gonna take the derivative of this term plus the derivative of this term. Right? Okay. So then let's just go to this term first. So what how, what would you do with this? I'm sorry? B times x raised to the b minus 1 times 1 over a squared plus 3x Which is? Excellent. Okay, that's correct. Now it's a little bit tricky, maybe. 
So I said in the basic formula that you have a times x to the b. And so you look here at this x, and there's, no, there's nothing out here. There's nothing out front. So you think, oh, there's no a. A is just 1. But it doesn't matter what side of x you're on. This x to the b is multiplied by 1 over a squared. Even though the 1 over a squared is on, is on the right side of it, you can easily just move that over here. And you treat it the same way. Does that make sense? So well done. You didn't fall for my trick. <laughs> so this, I could easily just write this as 1 over a squared times x to the b plus x cubed. And then, and then it would follow the formula perfectly, right? So don't be, don't be tricked if this term is not on the left side, it's on the right side. You see what I'm saying? As, as long as it's a term that doesn't have x in it, you treat it like it's a. No matter how big and ugly it is. So yeah. this term doesn't change the a no the the next uh, this no this term here yes, in the middle. Yeah, this term doesn't change. It doesn't change. It doesn't have x in it. So you basically you you just treat it, you you can just you treat it as its own separate thing. Yeah. So let me let me um, let me show this in just another way to make this clear. I can rewrite this. Let's say just studying over here. Let's say c equals one over a squared. Let's just say that. All right. So I'm going to replace one over a squared with c. Now I'll have x x raised to the b times c plus x cubed. Now I take the derivative. I get x or b x to the b minus 1 times c plus x to the cube. So it doesn't even matter what this thing is. If it doesn't have x in it, then it doesn't matter. Does that make sense? And I also I can rewrite the order. I can just say c times x to the b. Plus x cubed. And now it takes exactly the same form as the basic equation structure. So it looks a little confusing at first. Because it's not on the right side. a is squared. So you look at it and you're like, oh, maybe that's something there. Right? But it's not. It's nothing. Just, it's just a single term. So let's let's practice that. Let me give you let me give you another situation in which that's the case, just to make you help you be comfortable. We have a plus b minus five. It's all of it squared divided by a squared plus the square root of b times c minus three. All right, all of that times x squared. What's the derivative? It's just 2 multiplied by this whole thing. All right, we're just going to call this whole thing um, capital letter A. So it's just 2A times X. Right? So this is, this is a smoke screen. I'm just trying to trick you. Right? It's a huge thing, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have X in it. So when you're looking to take the derivative of this massive, ugly equation, all it is just 2 times this massive, ugly thing times x. You can treat this whole thing like it's a. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? So we're just not, we're not um, being led astray by how big and ugly this is. As long as it doesn't have x in it, you can just treat it like it's a and just follow the same basic formula. In the advanced micro class, which is policy people will take in the spring, we'll find ourselves in situations where you have an equation with something really big, and you're like, oh man, what's the derivative of that? And you're like, oh wait, no, it's easy, because the, the, the x is out here. You know, none of this matters. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Okay.
All right, now with all that said, are you ready to get to our derivative rules? We started them last time. Let's do one more. One, one more basic practice. Square root of x. What is the derivative of the square root of x? One half x to the minus one half. All right, let's walk it. Walk us through it. That's correct. Walk us through it. Tell us how we get there. Excellent. That's the first thing we noticed. We just did that for algebra, right? X to the one half. All right. So right. So a here is one. B is one half. So we plug it into the formula, so we have 1 half, right, b is 1 half, a is just 1, so 1 half times 1 is just 1 half, times x, and now we have 1 half minus 1, 1 half minus 1, which that just equals 1 half to the x, or 1 half times x to the minus 1 half, right, 1 half minus 1 is negative one half. Right? Excellent. Now what else can we do to this? What is this equal to? One over the square root of x. Alright, so we've got one half times 1 over the square root of x. Okay. What is that equal to? Excellent. 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So we did a lot of algebra there. We kind of have to know what the square root is and how the algebra works and how the derivative works. The derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. Review this, I think we have it. Let's say the f of x equals 3. What's the derivative? 0. Excellent. There's no x in it, which is 0. Alright? Okay. Alright, good. Now let's do our rules. Alright? We're just going to start from the beginning. The product rule, then we'll do the quotient rule. Then we'll do the chain rule, and then we'll do some practice problems. Okay. Okay. So let's say that my function is composed of multiple smaller functions. Let's say that my function f of x is equal to some function g of x times some function h of x. If that's the case, if I can look at my equation and I can see, oh, there's one function of x multiplied by another function of x, then the derivative is the derivative of g times h plus g times the derivative of h. So there's our rule, product rule. Let's just do it, let's do a practice. Alright, f of x 
equals x squared times 2 minus x. I want to know the derivative. But first, let's just identify what the functions are. g of x is what, and h of x is what. Lori, what's g of x? x squared? Yeah. H of x is? 2 minus x. 2 minus x. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, Catherine, what's the derivative? If g of x is, two, if, is x squared and h of x is 2 minus x, what is the derivative? What can we do here? In terms of simplifying this, what about this? What about this first term? What, I can, what can I do with this? Two x times two minus x. I can what? Expand it. Okay. So let's let's do that. Two x times two is four x. Two x times negative x is. 2x squared, all right, and then I also have nice, nice, nice. Okay, and then what is that equal to? 4x minus 3x squared. Okay, so just did some algebra to simplify it. Yeah? Sound good? Okay. Great. Do another practice problem? So if g is 
4x cubed over b, and h is x plus a. Lori, what's the derivative? This is, a, this is a tricky one. This is tricky. <laughs> this is tricky. Because what do we want to do first? Let's just, just, let's just first let's just walk through the, the formula. What's the first thing we're going to do? Okay, we're going to find the derivative of g. So it's the first thing we're going to do. So this is g. What is the derivative of that? I might be able to simplify it for you. Let me, let me, let me do this. 4 times x to the 3 over b. I can rewrite that as 4 over b times x cubed. If I rewrite it like that, that might help in terms of getting the derivative. Because now we can take that and plug it nicely into our, into our formula for a derivative. What would be the derivative of this? You can, we can just, we can walk right through the formula if you want. What's b? b is 3, excellent. What's a? 4 over b, excellent. So, the derivative is 3 times 4 over b times x, and then what's the exponent? You have b minus 1. What is b minus 1? Excellent. Excellent. All right. There we go. We've got it. That's g prime. You got it. You nailed it. All right. Then what's the next step? This is all multiplied by h. What's h? x plus a. x plus a. Right? Okay. Now what's the next step? Plus? Plus. Plus, plus what? Plus. 4 over B. 4 over B. Excellent. And then we'll multiply that by H, the derivative of H. What's the derivative of H? Let's do it term by term. We've got x plus a. What's the derivative of a? Zero. Zero. Excellent. So that's done. All we've got to look at is here. What's the derivative of just x? Let's, let's think about it. If I have f of x equals x, the derivative is what? And maybe what would help us is to recognize that x on its by itself is x raised to the 1 to the power of 1. It's x to the 1. So if I write that x to the 1, maybe that'll make it maybe that'll make it easier to do the derivative. If we plug that into our function. B is B is what? Excellent. 1, what's a? A. a is just 1. There's nothing there, so that means it's just 1. So 1 times 1 times x, right? So do b times a, so b is just 1, a is just 1, times x raised to the b minus 1. b is 1, so what's b minus 1? 0. Excellent. So a derivative is 1 times 1 times x to the 0. x raised to the 0 power is what? It's 1. So it's 1 times 1 times 1, which is just 1. So then what is the derivative of h of x? Just 1. So we have g multiplied by derivative of h, which is just 1. And there you have it.
Use a derivative. Excellent. And we can simplify it. Do I simplify it? Let's simplify it. Let's just do it. Let's simplify it. Kathleen, you want to simplify it for me? Here, you're multiplying the 3 times the 4 to get the, the 12, right? And then you're also taking this and you're distributing it. So you're taking this and multiplying it by x to get x cubed. And then, what's next? Uh, 12 over b uh, x squared times a, or x squared a. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which we can just bring the a up to the top. terms, okay? Let's let's bring that over here. So we're running out of space. Uh, what would that look like? Uh, 16 over b. 16 over b x cubed plus 12a over b x squared. 12a over b x squared. Okay, excellent. How do we do that? Well, we recognize that we have x cubes here. We have 12 over b plus 4 over b. So that we have the same denominator, that means we can just add the numerators together. Maybe I could just do that step over here to illustrate what we did. Okay, we've got 12 over b x cubed plus 4 over b x cubed. Where does this one come from? The x cubed. The, the x cubed? Mm -hmm. So what we did, what Catherine did, is she took first the 3 times the 4, that gets the 12, right? Mm -hmm. And so then you have 12 over b x squared and you're multiplying it by x. So x squared times x is x cubed. Yeah, excellent. And so then we have this. We have the same denominator, right? So we can just add the numerators. That's where we get the 16b x cubed. Yeah. And we're good with that? OK. We're going to move on to the quotient rule. The quotient rule can be kind of ugly. function. Then the derivative of f with respect to x is g prime times h minus g times h prime over h squared. Quotient rule is oftentimes kind of cumbersome because it has a lot of, it has a lot of terms in it. In some of my research, I do uh, 
to a mathematical model. So I, I have a, a theoretical model where I'm, 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 I'm modeling, I'm creating a model of human behavior and it's, and it's, it's uh, by hand, so it's analytical. I'm, I'm actually solving out math problems. I have some, some, some equation and I have to take the derivative of it and I run into this all the time where I have to use the quotient rule. And I get enormous, ugly algebra problems because of the quotient rule. So I'm, I'm uncomfortably familiar with this rule. <laughs> um, and we'll use it a little bit in, in the advanced micro class, okay? But it's okay. The nice thing about the quotient rule, with all these rules, is it just follows a formula. So even though the, express, the expressions can get big sometimes, although they won't get, they won't, they won't get too bad compared to what I'm doing. Um, even though this, the expressions can get kind of big, they're still very manageable because we just know the formula, right? We just follow the formula. So if we, if we look at it, we might be a little intimidated by the problem, but all we have to do is follow the formula, and be systematic, and we can get it. Okay, so let's do some problems. First of all, does this make sense, just looking at it? I mean, just the formula? Okay. All right, well, let's do, let's, let's start with a really straightforward one. One over x. We can solve this without doing the question rule, but we're just gonna use it doing the, we're just gonna use the question rule. But first, I wanna look at this and I wanna say, all right, I have a, fun I have a function f of x, okay, and it's in terms of a fraction, right? When I see a fraction and x is on the bottom, I immediately think, okay, I might need to use the quotient rule. If I see a function and x is on the bottom of a fraction, I will oftentimes think that I might need to use the quotient rule. Now, there might be some ways around it, and we can talk about that in a minute, but right now we're just gonna do this example, okay? What is g of x in there? Kenneth? Excellent. And what is h of x? x. All right. Okay, so if, if g of x is 1 and h of x is x, Lori, can you tell me what the derivative is? We're just going to follow the formula. So you know, let's just take it bit by bit. Zero, all right. So g prime is zero times, so this is h, right? It's g prime times h oh, oh, times, x. times x, okay? One. So if g is one, excellent. And then we've got h prime, so the derivative of h one. is one, excellent. All right, now divided by H squared. So what's H? X squared. Excellent. All right. Now just simplify that for us. Zero times X is what? Zero. Excellent. One times one is what? One. One. All right. So we just have negative one divided by X squared. Excellent. So that's it. The derivative of one over X is negative one over X squared. Yeah? What do you think? You did? Yeah. Quotient rule right there. You just follow the formula. Now, I'm just going to take it aside and show you another way of, of solving this derivative, just so we can see that we don't always have to use the quotient rule. So if I have f of x equals 1 over x, that's the same thing as what to get there? Or x to the negative one. Sorry. Excellent. I knew what you. I knew what you. I knew what you were trying to say. Words. Yeah. Just pause for a second. So that's. This is what we might want to do sometimes. Sometimes we can avoid the quotient rule. The quotient rule is big. It's complicated. Sometimes we can avoid it. Sometimes we can avoid it by bringing our denominator up to the top. All right. So when, I, when we see this, we see 1 over x, we see that x in the denominator and we think, okay, I might have to do the quotient rule. But the next thing I might think is, well, but is there a way that I can bring that 
x to the top and then avoid the quotient rule because it's quotient rule is kind of big. And I think, well, okay, well, wait, hold on. 1 over x is equal to x to the negative 1. Right? We can bring that one x to the top. Right? If we remember our rule, a to, uh, a to the negative b is equal to 1 over a to the b. This is 1 over x to the 1. 1 over x to the 1, which means it's equal to x to the minus 1. Right, so I could do that. Now if I make it x to the minus 1, the derivative is a little bit more simple, right? What is the derivative of x to the minus 1? Now we, all have all, now, now we only have to follow the basic formula. What is the derivative of x to the minus 1? We have the minus 1 times times x. Yep, minus 1 minus 1, which is? Excellent. So you have minus 1 times x to the minus 2. Now let's reverse our rule. If I have a to the negative b, that's the same thing as 1 over a to the b. So if I have x to the negative 2, that's the same thing as what? Minus 1 divided by x to the squared. Right? Which is the same thing. So this was much easier than this. So sometimes we can avoid the quotient rule. That's my point. Does that make sense? We solved the same problem but using two different methods. Okay, so we're just, we're just, you know, we're just we're taking tools and we're putting them in our toolbox so we can bring them out whenever we need to, right? Okay. Let's do some more practice with the quotient rule. Let's do some more difficult problems. Okay, let's do this one. We've got 2x to the cubed, 2x to the 3, over x squared minus 5. Now that one is not one we can easily convert into a standard derivative. This is one we're probably going to need to use the quotient rule for. We could convert it into, we could, we could convert it, but let's just do the quotient rule on this one. Alright, so there we go. That's a little bit more complicated, but let's take it in step. Let's take it in stride. Uh, Lori, can you tell me what g is? G is 2x cubed. Yeah, excellent. And then what's h? Uh, x squared minus 5. Excellent. All right, Catherine, if g of x is 2 times x, x to the third, and h of x is x squared minus 5, what is the derivative? So we've got 6x squared times x squared minus 5. x squared minus 5. Minus uh, 2x cubed. Over here. 2x cubed. here why the quotient rule can get somewhat ugly. You know, we have this and all of a sudden it becomes a much bigger function. Yeah. But that's okay. That's okay. Can we just follow the formula and this is what we have. We can simplify that a little bit, but let's, let's not. Let's do some more practices. Okay, everyone comfortable with this?
Let's do the square root of x divided by, let's see, x cubed plus bx. Catherine, can you tell me what x and h are? Uh, x or... Oh, did I say x and h? I yeah, said g, g is so g and h. Yeah, g is the square root of x. Excellent. Excellent. All right, Kenneth, can you give me the derivative? Root of five times two. Okay. Uh, what, what was what was the derivative of g? Right. The first yes. step. Simplify that a little bit, but that's okay, we don't need to. So there we go. Just get the hang of it. Yeah? Okay, we're doing we're doing well on time. You guys ready to move on to the next rule? Let's move on to the next rule. We'll get to practice in a minute with the practice problems. Alright. Very well done. Okay. Okay, the next one we're going to do is called the chain rule. Let's say that f of x is some function g, and g is a function of another function, h, of x. So we basically we have a function of x, so h is a function of x, and it's inside of another function. All right, that's the basic structure. If that's the case, then the derivative of, is this. It, it is the derivative of g with h of x plugged into it. So the derivative of g with h of x inside times the derivative of h. Does this notation make sense? It's so the derivative of g with the function h of x still inside of it times the derivative of the inside. So it's basically it's the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function. We have, we have a function inside of a function. We have the inner function and the outer function. We take the derivative of the outer function first, then multiply it by the derivative of the inner function. Okay, so then let's do some practice with that. x plus 1 squared. In this case, I'm going to write this a little bit different. First, we want to figure out what is h of x, and then we want to figure out what is g of h. All right. So there's an outer function and there's an inner function. What is the inner function? What's h of x? Kenneth, do you think? Uh, 
Who do you think H is? Keep thinking. X plus 1. X plus 1. Excellent. The inner function is x plus 1. So then if that's the case, what's the outer function? We would say it's h squared. So the outer function is the square. The inner function is x plus 1. So if x plus 1, that's a function, h. It's inside of another function, which is the square. So you basically you have h squared. Does that make sense? Do you see that? Do you see the inner function and the outer function? Maybe, maybe it'd be helpful if we carried this all the way through and did the derivative. I'll do this one. What do we do is we do the derivative of the outer function first. So that means we need to take the derivative of this. What's the derivative of this? It's 2 with h plugged in there. All right. And then you multiply it by the, inner, by the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of the inner function, the derivative of x plus 1, is just 1. All right. But now, this h is here. We need, to, we need to replace that with what h is. h is x plus 1. So this would be 2 times x plus 1 times 1 is just itself. So then that's the derivative. Do you see how these, the inner and the outer functions work once we do an example? Should do another example. I'm going to make it just a little bit, just a little bit more complicated, but not too much. I'm going to use the square root again as my outer function. Let's say f of x is x squared plus 3x cubed. That's what my, my function is going to be. My inner function is just what's inside. My inner function is x squared plus 3x. My outer function is the cubed. So it's h cubed. So how do we do it? We take the derivative of the outer function first. 3 times h squared, derivative of the outer function, times the derivative of the inner function. Well, what's the inner function? That's this one. Which the derivative of that is 2x plus 3. All right, so there's my derivative. Now I just need to plug h back in. So let's do that. 3 times x squared plus 3x all that squared times 2x plus 3. What do you think of that? Does the inner and outer function make sense now? You guys ready to do one? Okay, let's do a practice one. Okay. X squared. plus 10x plus 5 all squared. Catherine, what's h of x? Uh, x squared plus 10x squared. x squared plus 10x plus 5. And what's the outer function? 
the 2H times 2X plus 10. All right? So that's what we've done, but now we've got to plug H back in. So then what do we have? 2 times x squared plus 10x plus 5. All multiplied by 2x plus 10. Excellent. Perfect. What do you think? Okay. Do you guys think you're ready for your practice problems? Sure. Actually, I got one more. <laughs> so, gotcha. I forgot on this one. All right. This is just a, a special function that we run into a lot in economics. It's the natural log function. It's just a special function. It's, uh, it's a natural log of x. So ln of x. The derivative of the natural log is 1 over x. I just need you to know that. That's it. And with that said, go ahead and do your practice problems. <laughs>